going down a ladder. Here's the little cheeky one looking at us between the branches. That looks like a youngish baboon. And where are the elephants when we need them to shake the marulas down to the ground? We might actually just try and sit at this distance. I know it's quite far away, but the baboons are so nervous of the vehicles and, and of us as humans for being persecuted for pretty much most of their lives. And they don't get persecuted out here anymore, but it's a natural fear that these animals end up getting. <clears throat> and the farmlands in the Eastern Cape, they were huge pests. Now, David, you're wondering if the impalas will fight over territories or only the females. So, so David, it's, it's quite interesting. These impala will do a bit of both, I suppose. And I think everybody wants this open area here at Quarantine because, it's firstly, it's nice and open. A lot of the times the animals come and sleep here. There's lots of grass now. And then, of course, the big voyatella down. Whee! That was a big buck and a kick. It, was, it almost looked more like a horse or a zebra the way that he was behaving there than an impala and this is a prime spot so I think we're going, you often are going to see conflict here whether it's with the wildebeest, with the impala, with waterbuck so they'll do both, they'll fight when they find a group of females because you might find some younger males actually following the herds of the females very much like what an elephant would do however here's a baboon but the other impala might be that females will walk into a male's territory and they stay there and then, well, the dominant bull, uh, ram has got to chase away the younger subordinate ones that have decided to follow the females and chase them off. Let's go up a little bit further. Let's see, maybe these baboons are going to be kind to us today. Now, Justin is looking at their beautiful horns, and you saw how they were clashing horns just now. You were wondering if there's a, a, a benefit to the curve that they've got. Definitely. I think it's mainly got to do with uh, being able to... You see, the animals don't really want to kill each other out here. Like, when an impala fights, it wants to be... It's an argument. They push and shove each other around, and then that's the end of it. I don't think that they want it to end in death, because if a fight becomes that rough, they run the risk of being injured themselves and they don't want that. So that curve, I think, just helps hook the horns and holds it nice and tight. Hey, babies. I'm gonna go a little bit further forward here. Here we go. Just trying to line up. It's always hard to position with the roof. But you can see straight away the baboons now, well, they're actually not running away. They seem to be quite comfortable. Munching on marulas. And that, that's always funny. They don't pull faces like me when I eat a sour one. They're normally quite happy. But, but not really eating much of it. Did you see that? Ripping it open, pulling the seed out, popping it into their mouth, spitting it, leaving in the nuts for the squirrels. They do that so easily. Look at that one on the right. Look at its hairdo, David. <laughs> it looks like it hasn't brushed its hair yet this morning. Wait till it looks around at us. It's got lots of curls. <laughs> you need a hairbrush, my friend. You'll have to go and create one, or at least run your fingers through your hair. And I think it's because they may have got a little bit wet at some point, too. So they're looking a little bit on the scruffy side. And he's just sitting there, but that's a beautiful big male, isn't he beautiful? Well, he's hidden himself perfectly behind the base of that marula tree. I think we're going to spend a little bit more time with these baboons and see what they get up to. It's quite nice that they have settled down, but before the butterfly that Steph has found you flies away, let's go across to him.